very much. I want to welcome you to the Tadasi social event. We normally start this event. Um, I think the last time we had a NARS conference. We are very fortunate this year that we are going to learn about science, science education from our Kadasi members on the African continent. Oh, yes. And I am so pleased that this is happening. So welcome. And I am going to turn it over to Peter. Thank you so very much, our chair of Kadasi. Uh, we're going on to item number two. Uh, in six minutes, we go to see science and dances from Africa. We're going to see science in the dance uh, from Africa. It's my pleasure to welcome you to the 2022 Kadasi Social Fest. Uh, I'm you this year, starting here from the continent, from Africa. We are happy to present you the first item on the Kadasi Social Program. Uh, it is a special moment in science for Africa, a special moment in science for Africa. Thank <laughs> you. 
Yes, we're going on now to the second item, local dresses and signs from Africa. And we're going to be telling you what kind of signs we learn from our local dresses. We're going to Burundi, and uh, we have Professor Shabani is already in the room. Burundi is the south, uh, southeastern, southeastern part of Africa. So Professor Shabani, can you tell us in one minute about your local dress and the kind of science that we can learn from the dress. Professor Shabani, you have the floor. Thank you very much. I will talk briefly about this one, this dress, which is specific to Burundi, Islamic community along, along Lake Tanganyika, and also to Kenya and the Tanzania along the Indian Ocean coast. So this dress can be, you can wear it at any time. And uh, the science behind it is first of all, chemistry and also geometry. Chemistry, because uh, there is need for coloring of the fabric using chemicals that the women uh, mix in uh, specific quantities. Uh, it used originally to be done by women, but uh, due, given the increase in the demand, it is now produced in industry. Now, regarding the geometry, you can see there are some uh, shapes. Here, these are only lines, but in other uh, dresses, you find other geometric uh, uh, shapes and the figures. Thank you very much. Thank you so very much, uh, Professor Juma Shibani. Uh, well, uh, <laughs> let me t tell you about Nigeria. What I'm wearing is a three-piece garment. The, the pants, we call shukutu. The trousers, we call shukutu. And there's the buba, which is uh, under underneath here. And there's the agbada. The agbada is lovely, I tell you. Let me start. This is the agbada that you put on. So it's a three-piece garment. Now, what kind of signs? Oh, a lot of it. Now, the the uh, the fabric itself, yeah, uh, the 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 is cotton, and you can teach the the plant cotton and the products from it from it. And then the, the, the dye, the dye is special, special coloration that we get from, uh, that you get from some plants. And so you can teach uh, chromatography, you can teach extract of, uh, of, uh, uh, of dyes, you know, from plants. And then you can see the, if you look and teach mathematics from here, mathematics, you can see circles, you can see circles, uh, the design that I have here. Uh, you can also teach taxonomy. How will you teach taxonomy? If you see a person dressed like this in Nigeria with this kind of cap on, you just pigeonhole the person as coming from Northern Nigeria. So the Northern Nigeria people wear this kind of cap. Now, if you 
see somebody, you know, I talk about taxonomy now, see somebody wear this kind of car, this kind of car. You know, that person <laughs> is from the eastern part of Nigeria. And uh, if you see the person wearing this type of car, you know that person is from the western part of Nigeria. And there is something about it. If you see how I've cocked, uh, cocked, the, the, cocked the car, if you, if you see somebody with this kind of car cocked to the right, you know that person is not married and is looking for the wife. If you see uh, cocked to the left, uh, that person is married and there's no road, no road here, no, no, no wife. So that's it. Can I move on now to, let's see, Professor Yekao uh, Guladi, uh, if you are there, uh, tell us. We'll you know, we we, we look, we'll look at two men. And so let's look at two women. we we'll look at Professor yes. Guladi. Yes, Professor Guladi. Yes, take the floor. She's a uh, chemist, yes. Uh, yes, thank you very much. I'm wearing a booboo dress, you know, purple in color, which means that it depicts acid based uh, titration. You can have it as an indicator, giving coloration. And you see the design of the, the material that I'm wearing, you is full of circles. You can use it to teach in mathematics. You can see circles and circles within circles, which means that you can even use it to teach the area of a, of a circle. And apart from that, even the style, the style is such a free gown from top to down, showing that it's oval in shape and fitted with a headgear to match it, to say that it's uh, actually a regalia that can easily uh, depict role modeling in attracting the young girls to read uh, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so very much. Thank you. You can see that extraterrestrially, Jonathan, Paul is clapping for you. Now let, let's let, let, let's go to Ghana. Let's go to Ghana. Let's go to Ghana and uh, uh, see what what signs we can learn from the dress of uh, uh, of a Ghanaian person. Uh, Fredawa, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Professor Kebukola. In Ghana, we wear the smoke, that which adorns me now, and it's relative to northern part of Ghana. The smock is not tailored, but hand woven. It is uh, originally uh, uh, made from uh, cotton. Uh, and one science uh, concept that you can uh, learn from it uh, is uh, from the, the way it's made is observation. Now, it is not tailored. It is knitted in a given way that uh, our traditional folks do it. So you need to observe to be able to, able to replicate that as a, a manufacturer of the smock. Number two, you would also find coloration. You'd see this has only white, black, and blue colors. In other versions, you have uh, multi-colors that reflect uh, the taste and preference of uh, the customer. So clearly we see the chemistry concept of coloring in here as I wear the smoke. And also we have uh, patterns or geometry. Uh, depending on uh, the occasion, this is uh, usually uh, cultural and you can wear it for outdoors, weddings, or funerals, and also special occasions such as festivals. So depending on the occasion, there are different patterns that are relative to where you are going to and how you will be looked at. I want to thank you so much, and this is from Ghana. Thank you very much, of Ghana. Now, let, can we go back to Burundi? Dr. Bugoma, you're there. Can you tell us about your dress and what kind of signs that uh, students can learn uh, from the process or the product. Dr. Buguma. Thank you very much, sir, for the flow. Uh, from Burundi, uh, we have uh, what we call umushanana. Umushanana mm -hmm. is a kind of dress wearing by women, and it has like two pieces. The one is down, and the other one is up. So what is important, like, uh, first of all, we have uh, the coloring, because some, uh, some people, they like matching the, you have to match the colors. You cannot just wear like that. You have to choose the color which match the up and the down uh, piece. And the second uh, experience we can have, like, or, or stem we can have from that one is the way you have to, 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 to skip it on your body. So it's not, it's just that's what like you want, but you have a special way 
to make it so it can be fixed and can move uh, freely without any uh, problem. Thank you. The next item, which will be African scientist stories on why they studied science and overcame impediments to the learning of science. We're going to begin with Professor Juma Shabani, who is the president of the Burundian Academy of Science and Technology. I'll go on to two ladies, uh, Professor Ogunlade, who just spoke to you. She uh, is the middle past uh, deputy vice chancellor, that's like a vice president academic affairs of one of our leading universities in Nigeria, and Dr. Rose Agolo, uh, based in the U.S. now, and Professor Anyolaja from Botswana. So let's begin with Professor Shabani. Uh, why did, what, what attracted you to study science? And what impediments did you find uh, on the way, and how did you shake off these impediments? Juma Shabani. Uh, uh, thank you very much. The whole thing uh, goes back when I was uh, six years old. My father was, uh, uh, he owned a supermarket in a small place in uh, the capital city, but his employees were not, uh, you know, well trained. They didn't have uh, adequate knowledge to do the necessary transactions. So he taught me basics in, in, uh, in arithmetics so that I could help him to, to manage his business. When I went to school, of course, I was far ahead of the other children. And uh, the teachers, did, they didn't like it. They tried to slow me down, but it couldn't work. When I was uh, 14, I was doing better than them. So it, was, it, it, just, it couldn't work. I had to leave that school, go to another one. And from there, I, I really liked mathematics up to the PhD and the, the academy. Thank you. Thank you so very much. You, you missed the little point. What impediments, you are a scientist, what imped impediments yes. did you find along the way? And how did you overcome such uh, challenges? I know the you are a great scientist was... now, you are a great mathematical physicist, one of the best that Africa has ever produced. So what challenges did you, did you, did you encounter? The challenge were, were the, the teachers themselves, because I was uh, doing so well, and uh, they were trying to slow me down so that I could be at the same level as other students, other children. But when I was at uh, the age of 14, I was doing now better than teachers themselves. So they could, we couldn't really we couldn't yeah, communicate so much, properly. Uh, and I, I had to leave that school. But thank you very much. Now, let's move on to hear from uh, Professor Biyinka Ogunlade. Take the floor, ma'am. Yes, thank you very much. My interest in science started from childhood, and that stands from my mother, who promoted me, in a way, to liking science in, by, you know, exposing me to little, little things like uh, mixtures, uh, separations, compounds, and elements, in a way, without even knowing. And that sparkled me into science. And by the time I started on, uh, there came harassment. You know, in the class, I went to miss school. You know, the boys were more or less harassing me, you know, teasing me, calling me names. And I wanted to be shy in a way. But my teachers, they were wonderful. They encouraged me. They gave me confidence. My mother would say, don't, don't mind them. They like you, that's why they're uh, pestering you. And with that, I moved on to liking science and especially chemistry, which is really uh, dealing with nature in a way. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, let's get on to Dr. Rosia Lolo, who uh, is a great scientist. She's based now in the US. Uh, Dr. Rosia Lolo, you have the floor, ma'am. Oh, hi, everybody. Um, the person who really got me interested in science is my father. Right from the time I grew up, we always had a garden. We always had to dig out and dig compound. We had a garden where we planted everything. Corn season, we all go to plant corn, vegetables, tomatoes, onions. And then we had dogs all the time. We had at least two dogs in the house. We had cats. We had we grew rabbits. We had turkey. We had so many chicken. You know, because since we have big compound, we're able to make, you know, cages where they can stay and we take care of them, clean them, and feed them. 
And um, uh, back home in the village, we had a big compound. At the back of our house, we had different fruits, orange, oranges, lemons, uh, tangerines, everything, name it. Then the only in, in impediment I had was a really, um, uh, did I really have an in, in impediment? Yeah. The only thing is that when I was in high school, you have to be smart to do science. You have to make A and B, A or B to, to do science. And then you have to read very hard and be better than others to be able to read science. And then later on, when I wanted to do my doctorate degree, I had to go to Australia. I was married. I had children. And um, I had a, a son who was physically challenged. But eventually, with the help of my daughter, my husband, friends, people that come to Cape Bucolet too, I was able to leave and go to Australia to do my doctorate degree. Thank you very much. Thank you so very much. So we heard from the those who whose first love, I would say, uh, is science. Now, there are some others in the room who didn't like science at all. So let's hear from them why they didn't work along with us on the science path. Ulua Damirel Larry Alao, can you share your experience with us? Why didn't you like science? Yes, sir. Thank you very much, sir. I, I would say that probably because of the bias that science is difficult. There's this notion that people just feel that science is difficult. And I should thank um, Emeritus Professor Peter Okepola for coming up with this CTC approach. It makes science relatable. And I know that clapping of hands and clothes and everything around us made science. Probably I would have been more interested in science. But after like a week or so, I just felt this is not my way. I just had to move on to um probably a thing of passion for me thank you sir thank you very much so what's that thing of passion for you i uh, that would be history because history. I, I ended up okay. um, studying history, history. so uh, thank you sir thank you yeah let's get on to uh madam lovely in Wachuku. uh you want to share your experience with us yes sir thank you sir um mostly the impediments we have in uh learning of science could be the, you know, poor funding, you know, both either in federal or state um, universities, if the laboratories are not well funded or the school is not well funded, it will not be interesting to actually study science because it's all about practicals. Again, we look at um, lack of skilled personnel. We don't have enough good teachers, good lecturers like we have in Professor Peter Kipgola, oh. who taught me science biology in, you know, last two. He made me uh, like sciences yeah. because I wasn't interested in learning. So I was able to get through biology education yeah. through the um, lectures of Professor Peter Kipgola. Then we're looking at also at um, inadequacies of infrastructures. Most schools don't have this um, equipped laboratory, good infrastructure to carry on with science um, subjects. So it makes students not be interested in learning it. Again, we look at the interest of students. Like everybody has spoken, you start learning, uh, liking science from home through the teaching of your parents or your friends or what you've learned. So if you don't have that background of liking science, you might not really be interested in learning science in the higher institution. Yeah, absolutely you, right. Absolutely right. I'm taking you all now to Botswana. And we're going to meet with a globally renowned agriculturist, a soil scientist, trained in the best institutions in the world. For Samson Ayolaji, can you tell us why, why what, what got you into science? What got you into agriculture? Yes. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, sir. And very early in life, many questions of, of boil in my mind. And why is it that the sky is so high up and we cannot touch it? Uh, I can touch the sky, by the way. I can touch the sky. And I can touch the sky of Jonathan. Jonathan is why, so above the sky. Why is it that why is it that the aeroplane is flying? Oh, it must be that there is a road made in made in the sky. Yes. That is the road on which the aeroplane is driving. I will find a solution. I will find a reason to explain why something is happening. So you can see that I'm already having an inquiring heart, an inquiring mind, naturally a, a natural inclination that is 
asking questions and wanting to provide solution to the question. At the open ground, we will play, we will make telephone by making long strings and one will be with a mash box. One will be on one side, yes. the other one will be on the and it will talk. Oh, yes, and we yes. will hear. Yeah. And it is already exciting and making me to be interested in things to do with discovery and inquiry. Then we enter into the secondary school. We have very good secondary school, fortunately. Uh, our teachers will bring samples, biological samples. They will demonstrate magnetism, demonstrate uh, chemistry, uh, pop, sound, pop, pop sound of hydrogen, and so on and so on. So I got uh, infected. These are vivid and um, exclusive, exciting, and vivid, uh, which makes me to be more interested, more interested, more interested in science. All right. Fortunately, I did science. Fortunately, I did science and I, I made very good grade, but not not very good grade in languages and arts and so on and so forth. Yeah. Students in our school, are, those who are doing mass mass physics like me, are highly esteemed, and therefore I like to be esteemed with those who are recognized as brilliant people in the school. Yeah. Um, in Form 3, I was having problem with mathematics. Then yeah, I make okay. a determination. Yeah, Professor Elijah, thank then you I make so very much. Thank you, Professor Elijah, thank you so very much. Uh, we're excited about all of those uh, forces that drove you into science. And uh, you, uh, you know, it's taking you to that sky. Are you touching the sky? I think you are. You are touching the sky in the science that you just on. Uh, let us move on now to Af narratives. Of, we've done number five. We're moving quite well. Narratives of why Africans have difficulty with studying science. We've taken two examples there. Now, let's take breakthroughs in science from Africa. There is a notion out there, very, very uh, poor notion, that no science is going on here, that uh, you get the breakthroughs only in Europe, North America, and Asia. But we'll tell you that a lot of good science is going on, a lot of breakthroughs. So I'm going to begin with Professor Juma Shabani. Tell us in Burundi, what, what, what are the breakthroughs that, uh, that, uh, that you are making? And uh, be surprised, but uh, uh, blow it, blow it, blow it to the top, blow to the rooftop. Let's, let's hear you. Professor Juma Shabani, are you there? Yes, you are. Uh, thank, thank you, you very much. much. Uh, uh, recent, recently, recently, the, the Faculty of Agriculture of the University of Burundi produced a new variety of sweet potato, which is uh, produces a lot of yield in, uh, on a small area. And, and this was done by crossing some variety, local variety, with some others coming, from, you know, imported and so on. So uh, uh, there, there was a lot of uh, 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 publicity on that. And uh, now the whole government is uh, very supportive to science, to research, and uh, they want to invest a lot of money so that we could do more, more research on uh, agriculture. So I think this was a, a major breakthrough here. All right. Can, can we go to Ghana now and uh, have uh, Fred Awa tell us uh, what your, your snippets of the breakthroughs that uh, the Ghanaian scientists are coming up with? Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Uh, Times that the Ministry of Health in Ghana had challenges uh, sending medical, medical supplies to the rural areas because of uh, an obvious reason of uh, bad roads to rural locations. Uh, one major breakthrough that uh, the Ghana Ministry of Health have used to uh, mitigate this challenge is using drones to send medical supplies to the very rural areas. You don't need to use the roads. Uh, the drones are, are faster, and then they take the medicines to uh, patients or hospitals at the right time for subsequent supply to emergencies and all. So it's, it's reduced their growth. It, reduced, it has also reduced the incidence of uh, uh, people uh, not having medicines at the right time. So this is a major breakthrough for us. Much as drones are already in Ghana, they were not used for medical purposes. And this, I think, is uh, one that is worth reporting here. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ghana. Let me tell you a little bit about Nigeria. A lot of good science uh, is going on here. And uh, let, let me take the matter of security. You know, security is a challenge globally. But in the northeastern part of Nigeria, we're having some insurgency. And the, we, we're not depending on 
Well, in part we do, but we are developing uh, technology relating to armaments, uh, the, 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 the tanks that our, our forces, armed forces are using, locally produced and of such high tech, uh, high tech that uh, we, we're getting people from outside Nigeria to come and see what we're doing. Now, the uh, 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 most of the ammunition of the small weapons that we, we were using are manufactured here. If, if you do know the uh, AK-47, don't uh, be manufactured by, by, by Russia. In a little while, you will see the model of uh, small arms that we are manufacturing in, in, in uh, Nigeria that will be the toast, toast of the world. Now, let's take food security. We have a number of, uh, a lot of varieties that are coming out now, like uh, we have in Burundi, that we will shape the world. Varieties of, uh, of, of, I mean, of, uh, of crops that are, that, that are largely consumed in Nigeria. So we are going to be self-sufficient in food security in a little while. And we also have, uh, okay, let, let's, take, let's take science education. Uh, we have the cultural, techno, contextual approach that took over 40 years for our research group you know, to come up with. And we are giving visibility to that, and we are pilot testing it all over the place. So a lot of good things are happening in Africa. Time does not uh, uh, permit us to let you, let, let you see you know, the, the, the full details of this and, and, and many more, but a lot of good things are happening. And uh, at the close of this social event, I'm going to send tickets to all of you to come to Nigeria, come to Africa, uh, Mary Adwater, bring the Kadaze people from the diaspora, come. Will fund you, fund you. Come and see the great things that are happening. In uh, uh, Jonathan, you know you organize that. You know we, we're gonna... uh, Let's move on now to uh, science from the perspectives of African children. Now I have uh, uh, a number of uh, African children here who will come to hear. Who is going to talk about? Okay, fine. You come on, come on, come on, come on here. Come... <laughs> And I'm from Roseburn College, African Childhood. I have seen and experienced science all around me. And I have discovered that science has been applicable to every day of our activities and our daily life and even our games. Do you know that when we rub our palms together to generate warmth or when we make a firm grip on the ground, it explains frictional force. You know that when we dip tea bags into hot water, it explains diffusion. When we inflate balloons, it explains principles of elasticity, which is connecting to the Hooke's law. And when we angrily... Brilliant, brilliant. Go on, go on. When we angrily throw a bowl into a bucket full of water, it explains Archimedes' principles. And when we camp around fire during cold season or during cold time to get ourselves warm, we notice that it explains the principle of transfer of heat energy through radiation. And you know, land and sea breezes also explains convection currents in nature. When we mix colored powders with water and also sand with water, it explains solubility of yeah. a substance. When we fly the, the kite or when we play with kite, it explains the principles of aerodynamics. Right. So these are inevitable and obvious proof to show that science has been a huge part of the African culture. And this is what the cultural techno contextual approach explains. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you so very much. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, They're clapping for you in the hall here. Yeah? We actually have a room full of people here. Yeah, so you're going to come here and uh, we've heard from the girl. Let's see here from the boy. Science is very vital to the growth and development of Africa. It has helped us when we're going through the COVID-19 pandemic and how to school from our homes. And how to school from our homes. Science itself can is not inevitable in Africa because it has done a great thing for us. Technological advancements and access to these technological advancements have given us an opportunity to, be, to do great things, even from the sound waves of the alarm clock that wakes me up every day to the speed and velocity 
of the vehicles I take in to the electromagnetic radiations of light, which I dictate when I switch off a light bulb. All these are possible through science, bio through science subjects like physics, biology, and chemistry. And I want you to believe with me that science is part of Africa. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you so very much. Thank you very much. Now, so what are you going to tell us today? Okay, fine. Now, if you look at our program, we have uh, the African narrative. One minute. Uh, yeah, Kitty's African narrative of science and technology. After this, we're going to open the floor uh, for, for comments, questions, observations, and then we'll get. We'll, we'll get. No, after this, I'm going to get the uh, a group. Uh, to play some African music for us and uh, we'll, op we'll open the floor for discussion and then we have closing remarks by the chair of Kadasi because in another 20 minutes or so we're going to be out of here. So, Kiddies, African Narrative of Science and Technology. Yes? My name is Adai Kustana. Yeah, move to My name is Adai Kustana. I am going to talk about the African narrative science and technology. It's contrary to the popular belief that many scientific innovations and technologies came to the continent with the process of colonization. Africa is the sort of civilization. It is home to the world's oldest science and technological achievements in the world, with evidence found in various parts of Africa. Now, let's look at this from the medical angle. The non African narrative has that the orthodox medicine subject people to test, come up with diagnosis, and then prefer traditional and then preferred treatment card prescription, and that Africa does not have this in place. This is not true. Africa has tried the medicine. If nearly someone falls sick, they consult the oracle to tell them what is causing that illness, and then prefer traditional remedy. Modern medical care of drugs and injections can coexist with Africa's use of apps. A perfect example is Professor Thomas Lambo, who built Arrow in a psychiatric hospital and used both science and used both modern and western ideas to treat psychiatric patients. It is widely believed that airplane originated from North Carolina. <laughs> I laugh. This is funny because the non-African native is totally wrong. The African native has that Africans have always had their ways of traveling long distance. Kanako, which means road or journey short now, is used to move across a long distance within a few minutes. Let's look at this further in astronomy. The African native has that Africans study celestial symbols such as the sun, moon, and stars, to know when to harvest crops, to mark seasons, and to mark celebrations. They, know, they also have cock crows, which have to signify what time of the day it is. The non African native has that without the advent of European clocks and calendars, Africans will still not have been able to mark times and seasons. European clocks, which have, given to, which have helped to give a more accurate time, can coexist with natural clocks, which is available to everyone and do not stop on it to function. Africans are blessed with different indigenous gaming culture. However, due to the advent of computer games, Europeans now project computerized board games as though it is originated from Europe. Board games, one of which is Ayo Lekmo, is indigenous to the African setting, and I should tell you, is one of former President Chief Polisher Bombasaja's favorite game. Computerization, which has, however, preserved our gaming culture and enhanced computer literacy amongst Africans. Africans need to be bold and courageous in promoting their scientific and technological innovations. No one will promote it for us if we don't. We have great scientists in Africa, one of which is Professor Peter Okebukola, OFR. He has helped in promoting science education by exposing students to science and technology at their young age, and also by um, establishing the first secondary school just club in Nigeria. And Professor Shaban. Shaban, Shabani Juman from Burundi. I oh, believe right. that yes, one yes, day yes. I'll become a great scientist yes. with great inventions and my achievements will contribute to the effort in countering the great subjective native of Africa. Wonderful. Thank you very much, very much, very much. And the one day is uh, very soon. So we've heard from the children about the African narrative. You know, uh, they are uh, the future of Africa, the, 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 the people who, 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 will, who will take off from, from us. And they, they, they will give them the confidence that they can now come forward and give the African narrative 
of uh, science and technology. So let's have you play, play some music here. Yes. Yes, you got to dance. You got to dance wherever you are. That's it. That's uh. Sorry, sorry, it's uh, getting it off. I'm Michael Ahove. of the of uh, the come come close it's called the talking drum uh, the talking drum can talk science can it yes, yes it can talk science yes. now uh, we have a chair of Kadase she's Mary Atwater now I'd like you to tell Mary Atwater you know with your talking drum that Mary Atwater Africa greets you yeah come and do that here yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Mary Atwater, Africa greets you again. Oh, yeah, no. Yeah. Yes. Now, Jonathan Hill, jo did I, yes, we wish you a safe flight back to Earth. Very good. Now, Shari Watkins, we are proud of all that you are doing for Kadasi. Professor Samson Ayolaja, congratulations on your agricultural fields in Botswana. Nigeria and the rest of Africa. Oh yes, and the last one, we wish Kadase that is the best rig in NAST to keep going higher and higher. Thank you very much. Oh yes, it won't be that's it, that's it, that's it. That's it. That's it, that's it, that's it. Thank you very much. So, we are 43 in the room now, and uh, uh, we are uh, moving to the end. So, we have about five minutes. If you want to, you know, share some thoughts, some experiences with us, uh, it's time so to do. We are just uh, on mute, or if you like to raise your hand, uh, Shelana Martin would like you to say something. Shelana, she, uh, Shelana Martin, you say something. Tell us where you are based and tell us uh, what you have uh, enjoyed from this social event. Um, so I am based at Cincinnati, Ohio. Good. I'm currently a first year doctoral student at the University of Cincinnati. Um, the whole thing, from the music, from the kids, explaining their view, point, point of view that's that's, that's my I love, I love that so that, that was my favorite part getting to hear them speak and getting to hear them give their point of view that to me is just awesome thank you so very much I'm going now to Dr. Tripp Octavia Tripp uh, you have the floor ma thank you very much and thanks for asking me I was just overjoyed because one of my uh, major projects and research has been to take my pre-service teachers to Africa and to have them work with the students. And so when I saw the students talking, I was just so taken back 
from the time that I was in Malawi for like three weeks when we walked to the schools and we took the students with us. And my European American pre-service teachers were able to see how to teach science in the classroom, up under the trees, outside, and got a great feeling. So I thank you so very much for sharing that and especially the clothes because I was at the tailor every other day getting me dresses and skirts and everything and my pre-service teachers were. And we made sure that Dr. Russell got an outfit because her husband traveled with us for those three weeks over there. So thank you so very much. I believe in what I saw. I salute you. And I look forward to maybe doing some work with you in the future and all of you. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you so very much, Octavia Tripp. You mentioned Melody Russell. So I have no choice now to invite Melody, after which I'll take on Shari. I'm just putting an eye on my time. I will take a few more, and then uh, we will ask uh, Mary Adwater, who opened the social event, to close it for us. Uh, Melody, you have the floor. Followed by Shari. I want to say thank you. This has been phenomenal. Uh, it has been wonderful seeing our beautiful African ancestry and all the beautiful clothes and hearing about science and how it relates all from our mother Africa. We're so proud to have hosted this event. I heard, I think I heard you mention that you would like Kadasi to come to Africa. Yes. And to that, I say challenge accepted. Very good, very good. We would love to be able to come. Yes, yes. So I thank you for this. This has been life changing and so inspiring to see all our brothers and sisters around in, in Africa and from Africa and throughout Kadasi as a part of this phenomenal event. So uh, bless you and thank you for this. Thank you, Professor Melody Russell. I take on Sherry and of course I can't miss out Gillian Bain. Gillian, you stand by after Sherry. Yes, Sherry Watkins, take the floor. I'll be very quick. This was wonderful, Peter, and I, I just, you know, you know, yesterday, yesterday at our session, for all of you that attended our administrative session, we, we met and we talked about the, the membership committee, and we were really talking about ways that we should continue to collaborate and learn about each other's research and support each other's research. And I have to tell you, every time Peter and colleagues show up, they do just that. So thank you for being an exemplar of what it you know of what it's like to learn about each other's research and support each other just thank you for that um thank you for always lifting that up in the space and making sure that kadasi is really represents the the african di diaspora so thank you for that peter and colleagues and i'm going to pass it to jillian yes well, what a beautiful surprise, and uh, I feel so honored to be here, and I just wish that everyone in NARS could have seen and participated in this event, because I think um, we really need to recognize the value of our brothers and sisters in Africa and also learn from you science. You know, we need to know about the indigenous ways of teaching and learning science and being in science. And we need to learn from uh, scholars and, and also the children because there's so much to, to gain from that which we don't know or that which we don't know very well. We need to be immersed in the culture and the knowledge of science. So thank you very much for this opportunity. Thank you, Gillian. Of course, before I uh, get our chair of Kadasi to close, uh, uh, there is a big brother watching over us, and that's Jonathan Hawk from Outer Space. Jonathan, you have a minute to, uh, to intervene at this stage. Jonathan? <laughs> I just, I just want to say thank you, thank you so much to Peter and colleagues for sharing. I just, the entire time, I could not stop smiling. I felt so much joy in, in, in watching you all um, share 
science concepts through so called through cultural ways. And I just felt like, wow, what a, what an amazing way to make uh, science connect to life. And, and so and it was awesome hearing the children speak and hearing about the, the breakthroughs that are going on in Africa and everything. So thank you so much for putting this on. It has been life changing. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jonathan. Now we are on item nine where we'll invite uh, uh, our chair. Dr. Mary Atwater. Mary, can you lift your camera? I, I didn't interrupt. Mary, lift your camera so we can see your face. Oh, I'm yes, sorry, of Dr. course. We need to see Mary's face, Mary. I want to see your face, Mary. I want Mary. to see your face, right. Mary. So, yeah, we, we, the, the, the smile. Mary's smile is infectious. I'm, uh, Mary, close us, close the, close the Kadasa 2022 social event session. Back over to you. Well, I want to thank Peter and his group for leading this Kadasi social event. I have read about the talking drums, but I've never heard them talk. So I want to thank you for the opportunity to actually hear the talking drums. And, and they, they actually, actually talk to Kadasi. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. In, In addition to it, I have never forgotten that the person who got credit for the smallpox treatment came from an African who had been brought from Africa to this country. And he told that man in Africa, when we get smallpox, we take and break the blister, and we take a little bit of the pus and put it in the in the in the in the in the, in the, in the wound of someone who has smallpox, and it cures them. That's how that white European got the treatment, but that African. Never got credit for it until just recently when the story was actually told. So I want to thank you. And if I have anything to do with it, we're going to come up with a way for one part of this group to actually become a plenary session at NARS. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day and come to the award ceremony because Peter is getting an award today and he's the only one in that group getting the award. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. What time is the ceremony again? What time is it? 1230 p.m. Pacific night time. Okay. Thank you very much. And uh, so on that note, uh, the 2022 Kadazi Social Event Session is closed. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.